The new DJI Mini 4 Pro is the first DJI Mini drone that features full 360 degree obstacle avoidance. And because of that, it means we now have a whole host of new <laughs> tracking methods. The flies are back. And in this video, I'm gonna cover every single one of those tracking methods, how to use them, and I'm gonna give you some really useful hints and tips on how to get the most cinematic footage you can whilst using Active Track. <laughs> it's so weird having a drone that just follows you. Okay, so that's the first thing done, get my fly net on. Now, number two, we need to go into the three dots in the top right hand corner, and then we need to go to control, and then we're gonna turn on subject scanning. For some reason, every time you turn your drone off and on again, subject scanning, you have to turn it back on again. Now, if DJI is watching this, please leave subject scanning in the mode that we've left it on when we turn our drone off and back on again. It would save me doing this step every time. So once subject scanning is on, now we can see the drone picks me up as a subject, tap the little plus on the screen, and it's picked me up. So now it gives us the options to use either active track, spotlight, or point of interest mode. Now I'm gonna start off using the spotlight mode. So what this basically does is it makes the drone just a tripod in the sky. So I can walk around like this, do a little one of them, and the drone will just continue to track me no matter where I go. I can try and trick it by doing this, but it still manages to keep on top of me. Now in spotlight mode, you can actually move the drone around and it will keep me in the same sort of location on the screen. So you can do all of this using the right stick on the controller. So if I move the, the aircraft to sort of side to side, it's gonna move around, but it's gonna keep me in the center of the frame. As you can see here, it looks nice and cinematic. And the wind is actually picking up a little bit today, but it's doing all right. And if you want it to go further away from you as well, you can just push back on the stick and the drone will fly further away. And it's just gonna stay wherever you leave it so you can get nice far away shots like this. Or again, you can bring it in closer, but you can bring it in whilst you're moving, which is gonna give you kind of some more dynamic action into your shot. You can also get the drone to rise up and also descend. Let's see if we can trick it again. Whilst all the time still tracking you, which is really, really nice. And something else you can actually do in the spotlight mode as well, is you can change the position that the drone sees you in the frame, which is really nice for doing cinematic stuff where you wanna have more of the landscape in the view. So I'll show you an example of that. So if I wanna put myself in the left-hand side of the frame, I can just use the left control stick. If I just move that to the right, it's gonna yaw the aircraft to the right, but it's gonna keep me as the subject, but just off to the side of the screen. So it's gonna put me in the left-hand third, which also helps if you wanna create nice cinematic footage. Because if you wanna see more of the distance that I'm heading in, which is something you can do with composition, then you can just put me in the left-hand side of the screen and it just gives you a different sort of set of options when it comes to getting cinematic shots. So you can use this to create sort of a few different combinations of shots. So you can sort of do a nice sort of ascending orbit if you like, which is really nice and easy to do. You don't have to focus on keeping me in the center of the shot. The drone is gonna do all the hard work. And all I'm doing here is moving the stick to the right, backwards, and then also ascending in altitude. And we get a really nice spiraling orbit going upwards. Looks amazing. So there are a couple of things to take note of when in spotlight mode. From my testing, if the drone sees an object that it's gonna hit while it's in spotlight mode, it won't actually bypass the object. It will just break and stop. So I'm not sure if that's how it's supposed to be, but from my testing, that's, that's the results I've been getting. And the other thing is I should be wearing longer socks because this grass is getting pretty dry and sharp this time of year. So let's move on to the next active track setting. Okay, so now I'm gonna put the drone into the next setting, which is gonna be active track. So if I press the little plus on the screen, I'm now the subject. I'm then gonna hit active track, and then I have to hit go before it does anything. So now you have two options. You have trace and parallel. I'm gonna start off with parallel because it's gonna be a little bit more simple to explain. So basically parallel, the drone, wherever you put it, it is gonna track the subject like parallel to that. So where it is in front of me now, it's just gonna track me as I walk forward. It's not gonna swing out to the side or anything. It's gonna move parallel to the subject from wherever it's been put. So if I start moving forwards now, the drone should move backwards. As you can see, it's moving backwards now. It's gonna keep the same distance away from me, but like I said, it's staying in that orientation. It's not gonna move. It's just lifted up there to go over the bush and it's just gonna move itself around so it finds its clear path and it's gonna hold that position. Now, if I want the parallel shot to be a true parallel, which is off to the side to me, all I have to do is I just manually move the drone over to the side of me when it's in the location that I want it to be. So pretty much there. In fact, we'll go back a little bit to get a bit more background in. 
I just start walking and the drone should track me parallel so it should move in the same direction. It might come forwards and backwards a little bit if it sees obstacles it needs to avoid. But in this instance, we've got a pretty clear path for a little while. So it's gonna track me nice and parallel. So like I said, you can put the drone in any orientation you want. So I can swing it off over here so it's at a diagonal. So if I go all the way over here, the drone will now track me from here. There is an object behind it. Hopefully it's gonna avoid it. Yes, it has. <laughs> so yep, as you can see, the drone is tracking parallel. We've actually got quite a lot of bushes and shrub around here. Drone is moving around it nicely while still holding me parallel. Brilliant. So now we're gonna go into the trace section. So all I do is hit trace and we're gonna swap over now from parallel to trace. Now we get the little dial on the left, which gives you options of where you want the drone to be following you. Now as standard, it's just gonna follow me from behind. So if I just start walking, the drone is gonna wait and it's gonna figure out what direction I'm going in. And then it's gonna automatically decide how to get behind me because it knows I'm going away from it now. It's gonna swoop in behind and it's done a great job. It's found me, it's traveling right behind me. But if I wanna change the position of the drone because right now we're looking directly into the sun and it looks terrible, I just take my finger on this little thing here, swipe it away. So the inner circle is basically closer and lower and the outer circle is further away and higher up. Now you can change the settings for this if you go into the menu here with the three dots and then in control you go into focus track settings. Now if we look on the screen we can see we have the different focus track settings. Now I'm just going to leave these as they are from the factory for this test. I think DJI did a pretty good job here and you can adjust these if you need to depending on what framing you want to have or what you're tracking in particular. So if we scroll down a bit further we can see we have either normal or fast for the camera motion. This is basically going to decipher how fast the drone moves around you when you swipe somewhere else on the wheel. Now, if you want to just normal cinematic footage, I suggest you leave it in normal because when you go into fast, the drone really does whip around you. It would be good for getting really nice dynamic shots, maybe for shooting in slow motion as well, like 60 FPS. Getting fast can give you some really cool shots, but for the most part, leaving it in normal is going to be perfectly fine. And also we have near ground flight. This is going to allow the drone to fly really close to the ground, so below two meters. Only do this if you're somewhere with really clear space where there's no obstacles at all and you can sort of monitor the drone whilst it's flying because near ground flight, like it says here, exercise caution because it can be a very easy way to trash your Mini 4 Pro. Now, if you want to select vehicle, basically there's no inner or outer ring. It's just one set distance and you have same, you've got normal and fast so you can choose how quickly the drone is going to maneuver around that subject. And basically it's just going to follow at the distance and height that the drone is currently at. So you can move it around whilst it's tracking, but basically wherever you let it sit is where the sort of distance and height is gonna to continue to track that subject from. I haven't really noticed any difference between leaving it in cine or normal mode. I think that as long as it's in one of those modes, you've got the obstacle avoidance sensors turned on. If you put it in sport mode, obviously you're gonna lose that obstacle avoidance. But in cine and normal, it seems to kind of operate very similar, if not the same. And I haven't noticed me changing the actual control weights for the drone having it any effect on the active track capabilities. So let's walk around, let's try some of these active track settings and get the drone moving around me a bit. So as we can see, I'm walking around now, the drone is tracking me from high and far to the top right of me. And it's doing a really good job, but if I want it to swoop around and come in sort of close on my front left-hand quarter, I've just swiped on the screen now, and the drone should make its way around there. We can see it swoops nicely in front of me, and hopefully it's just gonna set position right there. And it's gonna to continue to track me from close in on my front left quarter. It's doing a great job. I'm gonna move it right in front of me because I've heard a lot of stories about people saying it has a bit of trouble when it's tracking from directly in front, especially if there's a lot of obstacles around. And we're coming up to a bit of a section here where there's a few shrubs and things. So we're gonna see how it deals with it. Okay, currently it's doing pretty well. It's seeing the obstacles. It's not quite directly in front of me, but it's, uh, it's having to work its way around a few of these things. But no, it's doing a good job. It's now right back in front of me again. So I'm swinging it around now, all the way up to the rear left of me. I've gotta be careful here because we do have a telephone wire coming up. So I'm gonna move it back in actually, move it in a bit closer just so I can keep an eye on it. Now in this mode, it is a bit different to spotlight. So if it sees objects, it will try and find its way around them in order to continue to track you. Really handy if you want to just keep walking along, let the drone do its thing and keep you in the frame. <laughs> Starting to get a bit steep now, I'm going uphill. Now I've sort of gone behind this bush. Will it pick me back up? Yep, it's got me again. Happy days. Okay, so I'm just gonna switch this over now so that the tracking is gone from normal to fast. 
And I'm just gonna give you an idea of what that looks like now because it's gonna be quite different to what you've seen before. So if I press it now, it's gonna quickly whip around me. Whoa, there was a bit of a hole in the ground there. I'm gonna send it way off again into the distance. And we can see now the camera movement is much faster than it was before. Keep sending it around a little bit, see what it's doing. Then we're gonna bring it all the way in and close to the left-hand side of me. Now we can see the drone, well, I can see at least, the drone is moving so much quicker than before. It's having to work its way around some obstacles here, but it's doing a really good job. So we're gonna continue up this hill a bit. I'm gonna swap the battery and then I'm gonna show you point of interest mode, which is the last active track setting. Okay, I'm in the shade now, which means there are way less flies trying to work their way into my eyes, my ears, my nose, and my mouth, but it's time to check out the point of interest flying mode. So same as before, click on the plus symbol, that's gonna select me as a subject. Then I'm gonna hit POI, which is point of interest. Now in this mode, the drone is just gonna continuously circle me around and around endlessly. Now you can actually change the speed of how fast it's gonna move you to the left or the right by sliding up and down on this dial. And it's very sort of incremental. It's not either one speed or it's not just slow or fast. It actually changes as you slide it. So once you set your speed, you hit go and it's gonna to start to track you. Now this is gonna be a pretty interesting test for it because I'm actually in quite a low contrast environment because it's pretty dark out here. I don't think I stand out as much as I would if it was a bright day and there's a lot of obstacles around and I'm going uphill. So hopefully the drone is gonna be able to track me. I'm gonna ramp up the speed now to fast to really get it moving around me. And as you can see, oh, the, it's, it's really whipping around. You can't see this. Oh my God, are you gonna avoid the obstacles? <laughs> okay, so it's avoiding the obstacles. It's whizzing around me as I go up the hill. And we're getting some really nice cinematic stuff here. Now, the same as before, if I wanna change the distance, I can do that by either pushing forwards on the stick to bring the drone closer to me and it's going to orbit me nice and close. Or if I want to orbit further away, I just pull back and the drone is going to fly further away. This is, <laughs> this is incredibly scary watching it whiz around the tops of these shrubs, but it's doing a great job. So I'm going to move it way far out, see if it can still track me as I'm walking up the hill. And it appears to be doing a pretty darn good job. Oh! oh, I don't know if you could see that was unbelievably close to the ground. <laughs> Alrighty, I'm going to slow it down a bit so um, I can maintain a lower heart rate. <laughs> but no, it's doing a really good job. So now we just got a really, really slow orbit. This cuts for a really nice cinematic shot of me finishing up the hill. Even though I'm panting out of breath, the drone is making light work. And here we are. Whew. So I can also change the height of the drone. So if I want to make it go much higher, I just push up on the stick and it's going to climb and climb and climb. And then I'm going to pull really far back. Now it's saying the subject is too far. That's about the limit of what it can do. Is it going to pick me back up? It has. I'm going to ramp up the speed again. I'm going to see if I drop the altitude whilst it's going round how the cinematic this is going to look. If I just do one of them classic traveler fingers up in the air, really nice parallax. I'm having to do literally no work at all. I can just carry on walking and the drone just follows me. It's like it's got a warrant for my arrest, but it doesn't, thank God. Okay, here's some footage of me testing active track whilst also on my bicycle. And I was basically in point of interest mode for the majority of this. And I had the drone just orbiting around me as fast as it could. The main reason I was out this day is because I was doing high winds testing. As you can see from the video, the Mini 4 was doing really well. Unfortunately, my audio for this video got completely messed up. So subscribe and hit that notification bell if you want to see that new video when I refilm it, when the wind picks up around here again. I also tested out active track on a vehicle and in trace mode and in point of interest, it managed to keep up and get in front to complete the orbits up to around 40 kilometers an hour and then it started to struggle. But when it was lying alongside me, it managed to get up to around 50 kilometers an hour before it inevitably ran out of steam and then had to pull in behind. But it was so impressive just to look out the window and see this thing cranked over, flying alongside me, just keeping the frame. And it was incredibly impressive. But once you get too fast, the DJI drones will just start to slip in behind you because they find it much easier to maintain tracking from this point of view when things start getting a bit quick. But at no point during the testing did it lose track of the vehicle. And I was so impressed with just how it managed to keep up and just how quickly I was able to go while it maintained me in the frame. 
so impressed. Something else that I want to mention is a fly in between my sunglass and my eyes. I'm going to work my way up to the top of this hill just here. I'm going to put together a little cinematic sequence as I go up and I'm going to show you just what you can come up with by using active track features on the Mini 4 Pro. Let's get a good sunset. <laughs> As you can see, the Mini 4 and its active track capabilities makes for some really nice cinematic footage. This drone with its active tracking is a game changer for people like me who do a lot of solo filmmaking. Having a drone that you can just put out there, there was an ant crawling inside my trousers. Having a drone that you can just put out there and just let it track you in whatever orientation you want and do whatever kind of maneuvers you want it to do is so handy. And as far as I've worked out, all the active track settings and modes work exactly the same in vertical as they do in horizontal camera orientation. One thing to make sure of though is please, please, please make sure you're in either cinematic or normal mode on your controller because then you've got obstacle avoidance turned on. I've seen so many pictures and posts of people crashing their Mini 4s by having it in sports mode whilst doing tracking. The obstacle avoidance sensors do not work in sports mode. Make sure it's in normal or cine when you're doing tracking for that extra protection. So it's safe to say that the Mini 4 Pro is definitely going to be coming with me on all of my future solo filmmaking adventures and it should be going with you too. And if you've just got your brand new Mini 4 Pro, make sure to check out this video here where I tell you the seven things you need to do as soon as you get it. I think we won today against those pesky little flies. I think it's now 3-1 to them, but I got one. That's the main point. Thank you so much for watching. <laughs> Have a good day and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye. So now if I start moving, <laughs> I'm off me chops.